are more wealthy people dying in private jet crashes. Yes, they are. They are. But let's get more into this. And I, let me tell you why I'm doing this video. Now, you may have watched the video uh, that I did recently about the hidden dangers of private jet travel. And this video is doing really, really well at the moment. Lots of comments. And one person in particular, and a shout out here to Renato. Renato uh, Steffenhofer, he's um, an airline pilot. He's actually jumbo jet captain, but he also used to fly private jets. And he um, came up with an interesting thing. This is a comment that he made of the video. And this is what inspired me to do this video. So listen carefully what Renato said. He said, this is the first time in about 30 years someone is officially speaking the truth about private jet operations. Most jet owners know how to make money, but have no clue who their pilots are and how well their shiny little airplane is being maintained. If jet owners would listen to Fabrizio, they would live much longer. And don't even, I don't even know Captain Bolly. Regards from the Boeing 747-800 left seat, former private jet jockey. So this is what uh, Renato said. And thanks, Renato, for, for uh, saying that about me. That's very, very kind of you. Uh, but Renato has a point. He has a point, And this is what we're going to be talking about because more people are dying in private jet crashes. Now, you're obviously on this video because you're thinking about buying a private jet. And if you're thinking about buying a private jet, you probably have a certain level of wealth. So you need to do your due diligence, which is really, really important. You know, like everything, we need to do our due diligence. We need to be comfortable with what we're about to do, in particular when you're buying a private jet. Now, in my book, The Quantum Economy, I talk about a lot about private jets, about, you know, how you can join this quantum economy. Quantum meaning faster. OK, this is what the private jet allows you to do. In this book, we talk about the economy of the future. We talk about the emerging markets. We talk about private jet operations. We talk about safety, which is important. And we tell the stories of a number of entrepreneurs which are using the private jet to build their business. So get yourself a copy. Click on the link below and get yourself a copy of the quantum economy because this is key in helping you, uh, you know, make that decision. Now, um, let me tell you a bit about my story uh, and a bit more about, you know, these hidden dangers that, um, that I talked about in my previous video. Uh, and let's just emphasize that point that Renato went on about. Now, you obviously have a lot of money, which is great. You've been successful. You've come up with a business idea. You've turned companies around. You've bought lots of real estate. However, you, whichever method you've used to build your wealth. And now you've come to a point where you're thinking, I really need to travel by private jet because, and the main reason why people use and buy private jets is to save time. So you're looking to save time and also to be a lot safer by buying a private jet. But, you know, as I said in The Hidden Dangers of Private Jet Travel, private jet operations are actually 9.2 times more dangerous than flying with the airlines. And, you know, click on the link to that video and I, I go more into detail there. I also talk about it a lot in my book, The Quantum Economy. So um, let me tell you a bit about my experience. Now, I started off flying when I was 15 did some glider flying, got my private pilot's license when I was 17, um, then commercial pilot's license when I was 21, um, and worked my way up and spent five years in private aviation doing all sorts of stuff from flying, managing airplanes for owners, selling aircraft, uh, organizing flights, uh, brokering flights. Um, and during this time, it had gave me the opportunity to learn a lot about the other factors around airplanes besides just flying them. Um, and this was really, really interesting for me. Um, and... Um, Pilot training is important. Then I joined the airlines and I started doing the simulator training for the tight rating, uh, which uh, really opened opened my eyes to really the importance of simulator training, um, uh, which in the private jet world isn't done as often as it should be done, like it is in the airlines. Um, I then flew for five different airlines uh, around the world, from low cost airlines, startup airlines to national flag carriers. And this brought me to fly with 65 different nationalities of pilots. Plus add the flight attendants, probably worked with 90 to 100 different nationalities um, and there are issues when you're flying with people that whose mother tongue isn't English and you have to communicate with them you learn uh, what effect, effective communication is you also see how aircraft are managed around the world I mean, one airline I worked for they bought them really bad airplanes they kept breaking down every five minutes um, another airline kept having problems with the APU because they insisted that you know we switch the APU on in the air at 35,000 feet when we were going through uh, uh, what's called ETOPS operations um, when if we'd kept the APU on running all the time, it, you know, this is just a technicality, but, you know, the APUs were failing because we were starting them up at 35,000 feet and they're not designed to do that. 
they're really designed to be functioning on the ground so you just keep it on um, and that's just you know one one technical issue but you know you sit there you observe you see what people do and having worked with five different airlines and all the different private jet outfits and that it's just given me overall really good experience uh, from a piloting operational standpoint but also from a business standpoint and this is really important because when you're going to buy a private jet you, you'll go online you'll dial in whatever you want to buy you'll come up to add buyer with, and I write for Adbuyer magazine and you can click on the link below to go to my articles or you'll end up on controller.com or some other website and there's lists and lists of private jets for sale and you'll click on the one that you like you'll look at the pretty pictures maybe a video sometimes and then you'll see a phone number and the name of a company or a person and you'll pick that phone up what you have to realize is that when you pick that phone up you are calling the owner's representative that person very often they sell airplanes what experience do they have in aviation what operational experience do they have very often they have none okay i mean recently there's there's been people that have uh, come on to the private jet scene that are selling airplanes that up until a couple of years ago were ministers in a church now what does that guy know about private aviation operations and this is the really important thing or guys that you know came through business and and and, and were doing selling cars or whatever and then they ended up coming and selling airplanes now when you're buying a private jet it's not just about the plane okay um and i interviewed a gentleman recently and he said that his take was i went to a management company and asked them what they what they thought was the best airplane to buy so they could charge it out when i wasn't using it and he went out and bought a falcon 50 great probably spent two and a half million dollars to buy the airplane it's got quite a bit of range it's got space and he was jetting around uh, enjoying the airplane with his family charging out when he wasn't using it and then i got a comment on the interview i did uh, this guy actually chartered the airplane it broke down in new york the passengers ended up sleeping on the floor in the fbo because there were no hotels available at, at the time and uh, the airplane ended up grounded for three or four weeks because they were waiting for spare parts now uh, again the management company never told him about that so when you're buying an airplane you're buying time you need to think okay planes break down when they break down how soon can we fix it of this particular airplane what are the things that usually go wrong and how soon can we get those parts can we buy them before and keep them as one company i visited a few years ago in vancouver and they had uh, some helicopters and they knew that certain things would go wrong with the helicopter and the particular manufacturer were a bit sort of slow in in, in getting parts to them so they just ordered a whole load of parts that they knew were going to go wrong and they kept them in their hangar in a, in a little in an office and they had all these spare parts there and they said you see i've got three of this two of that three of all that it's because i know that these things break down but you know if the helicopter breaks down i have the part here boom replace get it flying the next day done otherwise you have to get on the phone bring someone on the other side of the world order the part sit and wait for a month and a half and guess what the helicopter's sitting on the ground and it's not making you any money. Just interrupting the video very briefly because here on Bizjet TV we're giving out lots of free general information about private jets and the private jet world. But if you are really contemplating buying a private jet, let's help you to make that decision in the best informed way by getting very specific, specific to your case. And to do that, just ping me an email and we will schedule you in for a one-to-one -one call and help come up with the right strategy so that you, your team, your family can start joining that quantum economy. So ping me an email, let's get on a call. Let's get back to the video, off we go. So uh, these are things that you have to consider. So when you ring in these management companies, some of these management companies, you know, they manage like a hundred airplanes. You know, and these people think they know what they're doing, but they don't. They're cutting corners all the time. They've got 100 airplanes and they'll tell you the story. Oh, we uh, we manage 100 airplanes. We can get you a better deal or whatever. But you know, the guy that's managing 100 airplanes, one of them is yours. He's got all this staff running around and staff talk to each other. And they say, oh, Sunset's airplane went to that place yesterday. Whatever. And so now people start to go on the internet. They see who you are, what you do. And so I wonder why he was going to Kazakhstan. I wonder what he's doing in Kazakhstan. And people talk. You know, they've got friends and they go to the bar and they go to the gym. Uh, they go to church. You know, oh yeah, oh yeah, so-and-so's airplane. He was in the news the other day. Oh yeah, you know, he went to, to so with his airplane because, you know, I know his pilot. You, you don't want those conversations happening. So my recommendation is if you're going to buy a private jet, just keep it private. Hire a chief pilot, which can manage the airplane for you. Keep the group of four or five people doing that for you. And you keep it quiet. Now, let's talk about the other issue, the pilots. Now, um, pilots, what does a good, good pilot look like? 
um, you, you buy your G550, you think, well, I'll, I need someone with 4,000 hours on a G550. Um, don't restrict yourself to people with 4,000 hours on a G550 because there are other people out there that may be flying other airplanes. I mean, in one month, they can learn what the G550 flies. As long as they're flying something similar or bigger, okay? And, you know, bigger airplanes have more systems, so the pilot has to manage more systems. Um, and so, you know, th th their experience level is, is, is important because what happens sometimes with private jets is, you know, off I go, I buy King Air. I hire a pilot, he's flying my King Air. And suddenly my business starts to go. So from a King Air, I decide to buy a Global 5000. Now, operating a Global 5000 across the Atlantic is not the same as flying a King Air from, you know, Dallas to Houston. It's very different. So I know your pilot's been with you for two or three years and you kind of like him. Hire an experienced pilot, put your King Air pilot in the first officer seat for at least a year so he can learn how this whole transatlantic big airplane thing works that's really really important but you know some of these people that buy private jets don't think that way uh, but this is where you need an aviation expert like myself which can guide you through the process and make sure that you know you're not only buying time you're buying time you're not buying your funeral that's really important to understand this so now you you hire the right pilot now experience is important where this person has flown also their personality what type of person are they do they get drunk when they're on a layover do they run after women on a beach while they, they've got wife and kids at home which causes distractions and problems and stress and whatever do they look after themselves do they work out every day um are they overweight uh, someone that a pilot that's overweight that's not a good sign um you know these are things which are really really important that person that's up front flying your airplane needs to be fit uh, needs to be well trained now let's talk about training because you'll speak to the management company and they'll send you a nice spreadsheet so yeah you fly the airplane 200 hours a year and then we'll charge it for 400 hours a year this is what the spreadsheet's going to look like and you look and say oh okay three and a half million a year okay I, I, three and a half million a year is what it's going to cost me i'll make one million from charters it's two and a half million okay and one of the lines on that spreadsheet will say pilot training and it will say i don't know $35,000 a year per pilot. You've got two pilots at $70,000. Now, my question is, that $35,000, what does that translate into? Oh, he's going to do the simulator once a year. Okay. So when you go to do the simulator, what type of training are you actually doing? How many days of ground school? And how many days in the simulator? And when you're in the simulator, what are you actually doing in the simulator? Oh, yeah, the FAA requires you to do these 10 maneuvers uh, to this sort of, sort of standard. Okay, fine. But, you know, when we look at accidents... Um, accidents happen for many many reasons and so this is where you need to invest in having your pilots do more training because let's face it the private jet will fly less than an airliner and even if you're operating private and I know some people that fly 100 150 hours a year that's a really really low time for a pilot if you're flying you're doing like one flight a month you know you need to be doing more simulator training and that simulator training unfortunately is more expensive than what it would cost for an airline to train someone because there are a lot less of these private jets unless you're flying a bbj where you know there's lots of 737 simulators so the bbj is the 737 uh, private jet version so they take all the seats out and they put a, like a flying apartment in it um and you know and the tight rating on a 737 for a pilot is like twelve thousand dollars for one pilot uh, compared to like seventy eighty thousand dollars on some of these larger private jets so the recurrent training which is the ch training that needs to be done every year in the airlines it's done every six months some airlines do it, uh, give the, the pilots more than uh, every six months to training. Um, and there are some private jet outfits that do that. They send their pilots for three times a year to the simulator. And every time they go, they do an extra session, uh, um, more than the minimum requirement. These are things that you should budget for because it's important because it's going to keep you safe. So then, yes, you are buying time and you're not buying your funeral. And that's really, really important to understand that. But, you know, you're a business person. You've made a lot of money. You don't understand this aviation thing. And I'm being brutally honest here on, on how things really do work here or function on, or dysfunction in the aviation industry. The aviation industry is run by a lot of dinosaurs and coupled with a lot of young people that are thinking like dinosaurs. And they're not looking at the real facts and they're not, you know, and they're telling people like yourself, oh, yeah, you can do this for $100,000. Wait a minute. OK, because safety is important. Now, the spreadsheet when you're going to buy a private jet, the operational spreadsheet is important. But I can tell you this, if you pay your pilots a bit more money, they'll stay. If you 
give them a bit more training, not only will they stay, they'll, they'll enjoy that, but they will be a lot safer. Preventative maintenance, you know, another thing which will cost you a bit more money initially, but in the long run it won't. These are all factors which are really, really important <clears throat> when you are looking into this. But, you know, if you don't have somebody guiding you through this to let you understand, you know, this airplane needs this maintenance, I'd do this preventative, or, you know, at least hiring someone. And this is what I do for people. When people come to me, I will buy the airplane for you, but I will bring the right lawyers to the table, the pre buy inspection people. I will reach out through my network and bring the right pilots to the table for you and with the pilot I'll sit down and we'll get the training organized and we'll make sure it does more training it's going to cost you more money but you're going to be a lot safer and this is really really important do not get into this private jet game trying to do it on the cheap trying to be clever like you when you go and do a real estate deal where you you know you've managed to buy an apartment block from the bank because it got repossessed and so you know bought it for 100 million instead of 150 great you know with airplanes you've got to be very very careful uh, because these things go into the air, they fly at 45,000 feet and they go into bad weather and sometimes into outback places. And you want to make sure that this thing is buying you time and it's not buying your funeral. And so it needs to be done in a certain way. And this is why you need someone to guide you through this process in the best possible way. Um, and yes, it's going to cost you some money, but in the long run, you're going to save a ton of money. And overall, you're going to be safe. And you would have bought that time, which you wanted to buy in the very first place. I just see so many people around the world and even some of these big companies that, you know, have got lots of airplanes and I speak to the pilots and they're constantly fatigued. I'm not going to say any names here and they're constantly fatigued. They're flying for like 20 days on the trot. And one guy said to me, he said, you know, I woke up in my hotel room this morning and I had no clue where I was in the world. I had to look at my phone to see the location where I was and to see what time it was. And then they send me home for five, six days to rest. That's not enough. I mean, I've suffered from pilot fatigue. And I know that when you are fatigued as a pilot, this has been proven scientifically, by the way, a fatigued pilot is like a drunk pilot. Now, would you go up in an airplane with a drunk pilot? Would you get in a car with a drunk driver? And there you are insisting on just having two pilots. You don't want to hire the third one and you're flying constantly around the world. You know, like one friend of mine was flying the Falcon 7X and he lands from L.A., lands the airplane in, in northern Italy, and the boss says, ah, oh, great, uh, enjoyed the trip, he said, um, and then he said, yep, yeah. uh, he said, you, you'll be happy to get home. He said, nope, we've got a charter tomorrow, we're going to Tokyo. Oh, that'd be good for you, you'll, you'll enjoy Tokyo, it'd be fine. The boss had no clue. This poor guy had just flown 12 hours halfway around the world from L.A. to northern Italy, landed and 24 hours later was going to Tokyo. Think of all the time zone changes, the time in the air, the radiation, the fatigue, you name it. Um, and this friend of mine, after flying for this gentleman for almost 15 years, uh, going from the Lear 45 to the Falcon 7X, flying over 4,000 hours in the Falcon 7 one day he just told his boss to jump in the flipping lake. And he did the right thing. And since then, the airplane's been having all sorts of tech problems. I mean, in, in, in the, I think, seven, eight years that this friend of mine flew this airplane, it went tech twice. Um, and in the last three years since he left, um, the airplane's been going tech every, I'm not saying every five minutes, but it's spending more time on the ground than in the air. And this guy's, this entrepreneur's really freaked out. But, you know, again, he didn't look after his people. Just interrupting the video very briefly because here on Bizjet TV we're giving out lots of free general information about private jets and the private jet world. But if you are really contemplating buying a private jet, let's help you to make that decision in the best informed way by getting very specific, specific to your case. And to do that, just ping me an email and we will schedule you in for a one-to-one -one call and help come up with the right strategy so that you, your team, your family can start joining that quantum economy. So ping me an email, let's get on a call. Let's get back to the video, off we go. So this is really, really important to understand this. So if you're getting into this private jet thing, I'm being very bold here in telling you, you've got a lot of money, you've made a lot of money, you've been successful. But now you're going to buy a private jet. Make sure this thing, not only you're buying the right thing, but it's being operated in the right way. Uh, it's so important to understand this. And that's why I'm being brutally honest in, in this video. Uh, and maybe you don't like what I'm saying. Maybe you want to spend, go on the cheap and go to one of these big companies 
that, that manage a hundred airplanes and follow their, their their lead fine by all means it's your money do what you want I'm just talking from my experience of 30 plus years in this industry flying all over the world what I've seen how many people I've seen crash and burn um, and I've often told the story of the Leicester City Football Club crash of the helicopter a guy flying the helicopter was a good friend of mine how that happened um, and you know there's lots of other stories and I could be here for hours on end doing the video but you know we've been running now uh, according to my timer here uh, just about 18 minutes I think that's enough for today um, lots of more content here on Bizjet TV so I hope you um, get time spend some time in watching the other videos and uh, as you saw in in, uh, in this video you need reach out to me if you want to have uh, do a call and uh, let's sort of craft a solution for an aviation solution for you and get yourself a copy of the quantum economy click on the link below for that subscribe comment i'd love to hear your comments on this video and that's all from for Polly on bizjet tv and check out the video about the hidden dangers of private jet travel and i'll see you in the next one